Good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Touch by the Word Ministries Apostolic Center, our training center. Uh, we honor you and we thank you for being here tonight. Amen. We know there were other places that you could have been, but you decided to come here and there is a word from the Lord. Let's go ahead and uh, do our declaration of faith. Amen. Repeat these words after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is the better, having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Turn with me, first of all, to John 14. John 14. I'm starting a new series tonight. We're going to probably be here for a while. Amen. Uh, John 14 and 12. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version because I just like the way it explodes uh, and, 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 and just bring this, this word out. Uh, John 14 and 12 reads like this. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he would do even greater things th than these because I go to the Father. And I will do. I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as representing all that I am so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in through the Son. Yes, I would grant. I myself would do for you whatever you ask in my name as, re as representing all that I am. If you really love me, you would keep and obey my commands. And I would ask the Father, and he would give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby that he may remain with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to his heart, because it not, does not see him or know him and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you and constantly will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn, helpless. I will come back to you. And then let's drop down to verse 26. But the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, and standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sending in my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. You heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you really love me, you would have been glad because I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater and mightier than I, and now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does take place, you may believe and have faith in and rely on me. Amen. We're going to pray, uh, but my assignment tonight is to teach on this subject, exploring the dynamics of the Holy Spirit exploring the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. Father, we come before you right in the name of Jesus. Lord, of and within myself, I'm incapable, I'm inadequate. I come to you now, Lord God, I'm asking you to anoint this vessel of clay, that you would anoint these lips of clay, that I will only speak what you authorize, to build up, to exhort, and to encourage your people. Holy Spirit, I pray that you make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. Holy Spirit, I am totally dependent upon you. We need this teaching. I'm asking you to open up the eyes of our understanding as we go through these scriptures and go through this teaching tonight, and we will be forever grateful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Exploring 
the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a new series that I'm starting um, uh, because of um, this is a foundational truth that I believe that's missing from the body of Christ. We're not teaching on the Holy Spirit. People are um, uneducated from a biblical perspective about the Holy Spirit. So the, the, whole, the Lord has put it on my spirit and on my heart to go down this path. Amen? Amen. In the body of Christ, studying the Holy Spirit has become inconsistent at best, paving the way for, my, for a lot of confusion. This topic is being revisited based on our new membership. It's been a while since I've taught on the Holy Spirit. And also it's advantageous for our current members to undergo what we call a refresher. Amen? Amen. So now as we go through this, I'm praying for the anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy tonight. So as we go through this, the goal is to communicate the series from three separate and distinct perspectives. We're going to approach this series on the Holy Spirit from an inspirational, revelational, and theological perspective. I'm going to use, some of you are going to hear terms for the first time. Amen. And I'm going to do my best to explain these terms to you. Amen. The objective is to become more enlightened on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's start this right off. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Are you to hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit has always been here. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are coexistent. They are one, but each one of them have three distinct personalities. Amen. And if you went through first step, you already know we have a, a, a teaching on the Holy Spirit. Amen. But for this teaching here, I didn't even go back and revisit those notes. I'm, 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 this is something fresh that God has given me. It's not different from that. It lines up exactly with what's in that book. I just want to go to another level. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is critical to God's overall objective. Now, let me help y'all understand something. One thing we want to do in this church is we want to gain a healthy reverent and a healthy respect for the Holy Spirit. We are not to play around with the Holy Spirit. We're not to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. We're not to do anything to be disrespectful to the Holy Spirit. Does everybody understand that? It is very important that we understand that when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about that aspect of God that can get you in trouble more than in trouble with God the Father and God the Son. I want you all to understand that. One of the things that, that one of the biggest problems that we have and, and, and the reason we don't have revelation is we don't understand the, 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 the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We don't understand what his purpose is. He was sent here as Jesus left. Jesus said in his word, it is needful. It is beneficial that I go away. He, I, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to rescind the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost has specific functions, not just one function, but specific functions. A lot of times we're going to God and asking him for stuff when really who we should be asking is the Holy Ghost. It's not God that's going to help us understand the scriptures. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to help us understand the scriptures. Okay. Allow me to use a word of caution. Please remain, maintain a teachable spirit. Don't, the, the way that you're going to go to another level is you've got to maintain a teachable spirit. You've got to be ready to go to the next level. We should be in a position right now, I am not comfortable with being where I was when I first started out this year. I want God to take me to another depth. I believe there's a, there's a, that we haven't really scratched the surface. And the reason we haven't scratched the surface is we have not tapped into the ministry of the Holy Ghost. All right? Some would be introduced to the Holy Spirit in a way that may seem foreign. But I'm telling you, I'm coming out of Scripture. You don't have to worry about that. Won't be nothing spooky. Won't be nothing crazy. Now, watch this. It's going to be a while before we get into tongues. The Holy Spirit is not, we have relegated to him to just the tongues. Amen. 
the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's just one aspect of his ministry. It is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. When I say Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, I'm talking about the same person that comes on the insides of us and causes us to receive Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who comes on the inside of us, amen, and causes us to receive revelation, amen. He is the one that helps us understand that we have need of a Savior. He is the one that makes it clear that Jesus is the son of the living God. Jesus said he's going to come and teach you about me the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is to be respected with reverence and holy awe. Go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. You might want to take some notes. You might want to uh, get you a CD. You, whatever you want to do is you want to get yourself because you're not going to get it in this setting. I don't, like I said, I don't know how far. I can go all year just on Wednesday night just talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm serious. When you talk about his ministry, amen, you talk about that he's a person. He has a personality. We can talk about his deity. We can talk about why he was sent here. All I can, the rest of the year, I don't have to teach on anything um, that, I, that, that needs to be taught on. I can take the rest of the year and go and teach on the Holy Spirit. Hey, right, listen to what I'm saying. So in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, are you there? Verse 31, he said, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Do you see that? I want you to see that. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world neither in the world to come. There is a sin called the unpardonable sin. That is the sin against the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about it. You ain't nowhere near that sin, amen. I may even include that teaching in here because it would show you and you would have to have a depth of knowledge you would have to have an understanding. You would have to have received a baptism. You would have to receive supernatural signs and wonders. And then you would have to blatantly have to go on through all of that and turn your back on God. And you would tell God, I don't want Jesus. I don't care what I know. I am abandoning Jesus and I'm walking away. Now, you can walk away from God. Let me make that clear this morning. This afternoon, rather. We always talk about can somebody lose their salvation? You can't lose something you didn't earn, but you can walk away. And I know people, and there have some been some people who have literally walked away from God, turned their back on God, and went back out there in the world, and their latter end is worse than their former. Amen. Everybody listen to me. Amen. That's why when you get saved, it's best to stay saved. It's best to get in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church because when you backslide, you don't know who you're going to turn out to be. Amen. Amen. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Backsliding, especially when you have a level of understanding the word, is, is probably one of the most, if not the most, dangerous position to be in Amen. because you know better. Amen. I want that to sink in, Okay. So now listen to this quote. Now, with reference to blasphemy against the spirit, Christ's name is an eternal sin. That word eternal means it's a sin that will not be forgiven in this world nor the next world to come. Making it unforgivable. It was not the only sin that could have destroyed the Pharisees, but it is the one that did. Why? And if you go back and you read this, the preceding verses, they ascribe the works of the Holy Spirit to the devil. And they told Jesus, or they told the people around Jesus, where well, he's operating in the spirit of, of Bezebul. Bezebul is the devil. And so Jesus let them know. He said, now, you need to be careful because what you're doing is you're ascribing 
the work of the Holy Ghost, and you you saying it's of the devil. You about to be you about to enter into a situation where you will uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and you would not be forgiven. Be forgiven. In fact, Jesus told him in John, he said, you're going to die in your sin. Because I came here bringing you truths, and because you didn't receive the truth, you will die in your sin. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't want to die in your sin. You don't want to die in your sin. You don't want God to leave you to yourself. You want to remain a healthy sensitivity to the word of God, to the things of God, and that sensitivity comes through the Holy Spirit. So there, there are times when I do something and I instantly get convicted. Guess who that is? That's the Holy Ghost. You don't want to get to the point where you just keep blowing him off and blowing him off and blowing him off and you become desensitized to being who you are. There's no such thing as, well, well the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, he know your heart. You're about to get yourself in trouble. Because by now, we should have some maturity that the Holy Spirit, when he convicts us, we should turn right around and get it right. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. I am not talking about speaking in tongues. Because when you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of you. I'm talking about saved for real. And he takes up residence on the inside of you. He is the one that comes in and regenerates our spirit. So we go from a spirit that's unregenerated, which is not alive, and he regenerates our spirit, man, and we become alive. That's how we receive spiritual truths. That's how we receive understanding. That's how we can do things that normally we wouldn't do. We bless people that don't care nothing about us, but because we have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will cause us to bless people people. The Holy Ghost will cause us to do things for people that based on our own strength and our own situation, we wouldn't even go nowhere near. It's the Holy Ghost. You can't take no credit for what you do. It's the Holy Ghost. Jesus, they came to Jesus and said, a good master. He said, why you call me good? Only one is good is the Father. We have become so haughty. We, some of us, we become so blessed and we have become so haughty. We think that we're doing God a favor. Do you understand the dangers, amen, of going against God? That's why he sent the Holy Ghost. Let's go deeper. This particular, I'm still in this quote, uh, the particular aggregation of their wickedness springs from their reviling Christ. See, the Bible said, Seek the Lord while he may be yet found. That's why people who God or God constantly comes to, you need to get saved. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to get back in church. And they continue to just blow God off and blow God off. Well, I'll get saved in my own time. i get saved when, I, when I'm ready. There's going to be a time you want to get saved, and then there's not going to be no urging. That's not going to be no urgent. Because the Bible says in the sixth chapter of John, there can't no man come to God except, I mean, come to, come to God except he draw them. I want God to draw me. I want God, amen. I don't want to be left to myself. I, the Bible says, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake me. I don't want God to forsake me. I don't want God, amen, to leave me in no situation. Why? Because let me tell you something. It's dangerous when God turns his back on you. It's dangerous. Oh, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. The reverence toward God is under attack. There have always been generations who rebelled, but today, of all ages, people are abandoning time-tested truths to promote their own agenda. People, amen, are rejecting God so that they can do what they want to do in their carnal nature. They don't want God. They refuse to obey God. And this is the scary part. Some people that's doing this have been blessed beyond measure. And instead of them coming toward God and reverencing God and serving God, they have backed up. Some of them even have put their hand to the gospel plow and they look back. That's a dangerous thing. 
It's a dangerous thing to receive, amen, your, uh, uh, your license or your ordinations or to be elevated or to be consecrated, amen, uh, amen, in a setting where people know that you are a man and a woman of God and turn your back on God. You are, oh, my God, oh, I can feel it. You are walking on dangerous ground. I'm serious. Tonight's just an introduction. I'm serious. We got to stop playing with God. See, we don't have these sermons no more. Hey, everybody talking about, you know, uh, uh, the blessing of the Lord. Yes, that's the blessing of the Lord. But before he can bless you, you got to submit to God's authority. Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord take it away. Just as quick as he bless you, he'll snatch it from you. And you listen to me. Are you here tonight? We were living in an age where people who refuse wise counsel, who oppose accountability, and balk at submission. Do you know that when we are in heaven, that when we're in a 1,000 year rule, that we're not going to walk around here with our own opinion? There will be no rebellion. This is a spirit of lawlessness. It is extremely dangerous. We talk to our kids, we talk to them, and we talk to them, and they just want to blow us off. It's dangerous. Listen to me, young people. It's dangerous when you just consistently keep blowing off your mama or blowing off your daddy or blowing off your grandmother. They know better. They're telling you, you may not like it, but trust me, what they're telling you is for your good. I promise you. Just stop for a moment and just, just think, what did they say? Why did they say it? Because they, won't, they don't want you to get in trouble. They don't want you to get killed. They don't want you to go out here and get hung, strung out on drugs, or worse yet, take a drug overdose, Un, be, be, become pregnant out of wedlock. Rejection of God's order is to align oneself with the satanic principle of rebellion and lawlessness. You can't have one foot in the church and one foot out. You can't do it. There's too many people straddling the fence. One foot in and one foot out. Whatever you're going through. Where's Minister Randolph at? Whatever you're going through. I, I applaud Minister Randolph. He suffered a, a I mean, just a, a tragic loss last year. His wife passed away on a Thursday, and we had intercessory prayer. And Minister Randolph came on intercessory prayer, messed all of us up. You know what's kept him? God. Yes, he, I'm sure he's gone through situations and questioned God and things, isn't he? But he never turned his back on God. He trusted God, and it has been God that has helped him walk through this tragedy. Even today, I know there are times where he hurts, but he relies on God. So no matter what you're going through, you have to rely on God. You have to. We don't have the, cap the, the, the capacity or the capability to walk through tragedy, the loss of a loved one, amen, or, or a major loss apart from God. We'll lose our mind. We'll turn our backs on God. We'll become angry and we'll walk away. But if you trust God, you got to trust him. So the objective of this teaching, exploring the dynamics of the Holy Spirit, is to properly interpret, comprehend, and appreciate the authenticity of the Holy Spirit. To appreciate the authentic authenticity of his ministry. One of the tragedies in the body of Christ has to do with the limited teaching on the ministry role of the Holy Spirit. Amen, which has called, created a, a, a lot of misunderstanding, misinformation, misinterpretation, and misrepresentation. Most people don't even know the Holy Spirit is God. We have the nerve to call him it. He's not an it, he's a he. And we need to stop playing around, talking about, well, uh, 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 God is a female and all, and all this kind of matter. God created male and female for the earth. 
We need to, I remember years ago when I first hit this city, they came out with a Bible and changed the gender in the Bible. That's, you know, it didn't last long. They took change some of the terms from a male perspective to a female perspective. That is sacrilegious and is desecrating the word of God. Paul said, if any, if even an angel or a man change any of this, and I'm just paraphrasing, he said, let them be a curse. He said, so I say again, if a man or an angel teach any other gospel, let them be a curse. We need to be very careful. Okay? So now, the study, I'm, I'm going to give you a theological term. The study of the Holy Ghost is called pneumatology. For those of you that are taking notes, it's just like pneumonia. It's P-N-E-U-M-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y. It's called pneumatology. That is a theological term. Remember I told you, inspirational, revelational, and theological perspective. Okay? I'm going to give you terms that are not in the Bible, but they are, they've been assigned as a study. And, and theology is really just a study of God. It's a deeper study of God. It gives us understanding of the Bible. It gives us understanding of different, uh, uh, different uh, 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 aspects of, of the Christianity religion. Soteriology is the study of Jesus. Estatology is the study of the end times. The Bible, when we said the Bible, it's called bibliography, bibliology. See, all these terms, they're not biblical terms, but they are theology terms. And, and what makes them powerful, make them relevant is they line up with the Bible. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so it's called pneumatology. <clears throat> Listen to this. The term pneumatology comes from two Greek words, namely pneuma, meaning wind, breath, or spirit, use of the Holy Spirit, and logos meaning word, matter, or thing. And it is used in Christian, in Christian systematic theology. Systematic theology is a systematic way that we should study the Bible. Why is it important? We will study the Bible. You'll study the Bible, the fall of man. Sin, original sin. God the Father, God the Son, God, uh, uh, God the Holy Ghost. You'll you have a study of God, his, his attributes, his holiness, his immutability. You, you, you'll study Jesus Christ. Why? Because we want to know that he was fully man and fully God. He was deity. That's very important because one of the main points in being a Christian is this is the only religion. I hate to use that word religion, but this is the only religion where the initiator lived, died, and he still lives. No other religion can say that. None. That's what separates us from everybody else. Not only does he live, he's sitting on the right hand of God, living to make intercession for us. Does everybody understand that? That's why we have a man systematic theology. That's why you just, Lord, help me. To be a pastor, you have to literally sacrifice your life. Because you have to study, you have to study. Just tonight, I was talking to Sister Brianna, and she was talking about the Maccabees. Anybody ever heard of the Maccabees? One. Raise your hand. Two. I know you, Minister Pi, Elder Pi. Two. Well, if you read, go, go to, go to, uh, go to, uh, <laughs> go to Malachi. Help me, Holy God. I'm trying to, I'm veering off course, but I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you something. Malachi. Mm -hmm. Let me get there. The last chapter of Malachi, the last verse talking about the forerunner for Jesus Christ. Does everybody see that? Everybody know who the forerunner was, right? If you're not a minister, y'all be quiet. I don't want to minister. Who's the forerunner? John. John the Baptist is a forerunner. In other words, he was the one that sent forth before Jesus came 
to pave the way for Jesus Christ. Amen. Where in my Bible, I have a different Bible. It's a New Testament. It's, 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 a, it's a study Bible. There's a, there's a section in my Bible that's between Malachi and Matthew. Now watch what it says here. The 400 years between the prophecy of Malachi and the advent of Christ are frequently described as silent. In other words, what they're saying is God didn't speak during these 400 years. And so there was this group called the Maccabees who rose up. They were Jews, and they were being oppressed, and, and people would come. Uh, the enemy would come, and they, they desecrated the temple. Amen. And did all kind of foolish things where the Maccabees rose up. There was a family of them. They rose up and they were militant and they fought against these other people to preserve the temple and to preserve their faith, which was the Jewish faith. Does everybody understand that? Why is that important? It is so important that your pastor not be ignorant of the word. Amen. Does everybody understand that? It is so important that your pastor or your pastors, they spend time in the Word. They spend time studying. Amen. Uh, we go shopping, and, and, and pastors, she likes shoes. I'm looking for a bookstore. And as I said, I think in this, in this city here that we don't have a Bible bookstore anymore. Amen. You got to go all the way to Decatur to get a Bible bookstore. I think that's, that's and then they're taking one of them, and they turn it into a, a pet store. Every time I walk past it or ride past it, it's just something that does, it does something in my spirit. You, you, if you know how this woman of God steadies the word, the sacrifice that she makes, why? Because when we come before you, we want to make sure you're getting a fresh word. We want to make sure that you're not getting something to entertain you. We want to make sure that you're getting a word that's going to get down the inside of you, that's going to cause you to rise above every situation that you're dealing with. Amen. It is a major sacrifice. Okay? So the Holy Spirit, he's a person. Does everybody understand that? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Go to Genesis chapter 1. I knew I was going to be off course, but this is okay. This is okay. This is okay. Y'all all right? Amen. Okay. We're talking about exploring the dynamics of the Holy Spirit. So in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. You see that? Okay, so it's telling you now the first chapter, the first verse in Genesis 1 it's identifying who's there. It said, who's there? God created the heavens and earth. Let's go to verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the earth. Now, your word in your Bible, the Spirit of God should be capitalized. Who do you think that is? That's the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? I need you to see this. I need you to see that he's always been here. Amen. Okay? Now, drop down to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So who is the us? God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Well, how do I know that God the Son is there? I'm glad you asked. Go to 1 John 1. Anybody getting anything? Go to John 1. See, I always use this term. I haven't used it much here. We have to connect the dots. Okay? John chapter 1. Are you there? Okay, I want everybody to be there because I want you to get this. This is what Bible study is all about. I want you to get this. So in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, where have we heard that before? In Genesis what? 1 and 1. Here we are again. In the beginning was the word. Is, 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 is that word capitalized in your Bible? Okay, good. And the word was with God, and the word was with, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Watch this. All things were what? Made by him. 
and without him was not anything made that was made. Who is the word? Jesus is the word. So we just connected the dots. So now we know that in the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They were all three there right before it, God started creating everything. Does everybody understand that? Very important that you understand this. Who who's getting this for the first time? First time you ever heard it. Thank you. Y'all come here. Because y'all ain't the only two. But since y'all was so brave, y'all come here. Since y'all were so brave to raise your hand, here you go. One for you and one for you. Amen. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but this is why we have to study the word. That's why when people tell you, well, if God is so good, why we got calamity? We got calamity because of Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, called the fall of man. God didn't have anything to do with this. He turned ownership, watch this, not ownership, but stewardship of the earth over to Adam. And there's a lease on the earth. At the end of that 6,000 years, amen, that's when the churches can be pulled up out of here. And that's when the great the tribulation period and the great tribulation, tribulation period is going to come about. Does everybody understand? Am I going too fast? I know this is a lot of information. Y'all probably like, slow down. Okay. Now. We must gain a healthy perspective of the Holy Spirit, also referred to as the Holy Ghost. They are used interchangeably. They are the same person. So you, whether you say Holy Spirit or whether you say Holy Ghost, you're not in error. You are okay. Okay? Now listen to this quote by R.C. Sproul. In talking about the Holy Spirit's personhood and encouraging believers to pursue intimacy with him, R.C. Sproul said this, do you know what the Holy Spirit is? Do you understand the Holy Spirit in terms of a personal relationship? Or does the Spirit remain for you a vague, misty, abstract concept or, or an elusive, shapeless force? But the Holy Spirit is not simply an abstract force. He is a person who empowers the people of God for Christian life. It is the Holy Spirit who's in power us. He's not a it. He is a he. Amen. He's not some abstract, misty force. He is power that is on the inside of you and of me. Amen. How do you think we keep ourselves? The Holy Spirit. Amen. He strengthens us to keep ourselves. Amen. Okay. Now, let's go to these scriptures right here real quick. Everybody okay? Okay. Okay. I know this is a lot. I know. I know. Don't get mad at you. Don't get mad at anybody. That's why you're here. Okay. This is when I want to go. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This is good stuff here. This is good stuff. <clears throat> this is good stuff here. Ephesians chapter 4 and 30, it says here, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. If he was not a person, he couldn't be grieved. If he was just a force, if he was just an abstract object, he could not be grieved. In order for him to be grieved, he has to have feelings. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Okay, listen to this quote. The Holy Spirit rejoices in our salvation, not for himself since he has no lack of blessedness, but if we have disobeyed the Spirit, we have grieved the Spirit. See, whenever, whenever we disobey God, we grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve him. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's not going to come in a commanding way. He's going to come in a very gentleman-like way to try to urge you to do right. He will not force himself on you. Does everybody understand that? Now, Satan will. 
Satan will push his way in your life and try to domin and domineer you and dominate you, not the Holy Spirit. That's why when we come here on Sunday mornings, it is so important that the atmosphere be right so that the word can come forth. That's why when we come here, amen, uh, we need to come with a mind expecting the word. We need to come with a mind expecting to participate in worship. Don't rely on the praise team to get you in the mood. Come here with a, with a heart of prayer. Come here with a heart of expectation. That way when the Holy Spirit comes, we can minister. Why do you all think that when we're up here ministering, we don't want people moving around? Because when the Shekinah glory is here, when the Holy Spirit is here, he can be up, he can be disrupted to the point he'll leave. And now we can't minister anymore. Because we want the power to fall. There are times I tell people, hey, I need y'all praying in a praying in the Holy Ghost. Because what happens is. I don't want to scare nobody. Sometimes we encounter spirits up here. And so you have to be prepared to deal with those spirits. That's why we fast. That's why we pray. That's why we stay in the word of God. If you in ministry, you're not making sacrifices. I don't know why you in ministry. Because ministry is going to cause you to make sacrifices. There are days I cannot have no Chick-fil-A. Amen. Because we have to make, I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to tell you that, that this costs you. Am I lying, Pastor? You okay, Pastor? Okay. Got to make sure Pastor's okay. Okay. I love Pastor, so we got to make sure Pastor's okay. Okay? So, so when we're here, so now the slightest movement. I don't know where we get this from because I grew up in a Baptist church. We didn't, we didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We didn't have deliverance, sir. But guess what? Doing communion, you better not move. Move if you want to. And your mama put that eyes on you. Can't nobody save you. Because you know you're going to get a killing. And now people get up and they go to the bath. We, we're doing communion. It is a sacred when we're doing communion. We don't know what God wants to do when communion is going on. We don't know what God is doing, amen, when, 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 when ministry is going on here, but it may be somebody out there who's touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why we got to stop all this movement, you know, uh, people just on their cell phones. I'm just trying to help us out now. It's a time of hope. We come here, service start at 1030, normally by 12, 12, 15, we're done. You can't give God less than two hours. We can't be still. We can't leave our phone alone for two hours. And sometimes I said, well, well, Bishop, you be up there with your phone. Yeah, but see, you don't understand. I, I got this, this, this notepad on my phone. When people are preaching, God give me sermon titles. And if you know anything about God, if you don't write it down then, you, he won't go back and he won't give it to you. I'm serious. I laid in bed. He gave me a good sermon time, but I was too lazy to get up and write it down. And I wake up the next morning, please. And God be like, he will not. Y'all think I'm joking. He won't give it back to you. Because his, his thing is, if it ain't sacred enough to you to get it the first time, I'm not going to waste my time giving it back to you again. That's why I use my phone. Okay. All right. I'm running out of time. Okay, I knew I was going to do this. Go to Acts 5. So we're talking about grieving the Holy Spirit. Sister Gail, you okay? Okay, all right. I know she okay. She got that big old smile on her face. She all right. Amen. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. Are you there? I want everybody there because I want you to see this. What, what, are we in the Old Testament and the New Testament? We, we, we where? Okay. Because a lot of times stuff happens, you say, well, that's the Old Testament, this the New. And let me help you out. The book of Acts has not ended. We are living the book of Acts right now. Does everybody understand that? All right. Verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with his wife, Sapphora, his wife, 
sold a possession. Let me give you a little background. At this time, the church was growing. People were selling property, and they was taking the money and bringing it to the, to the apostles' feet, and they were distributing it to the poor, to the needy, et cetera, et cetera. So now we got Ananias and Sapphira. They have sold some property. Everybody tracking? And kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They could have kept it all. It was theirs. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They could have just went on to Galilee, went on a cruise and kept it all. They would have been safe. They would have been fine. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part of the price of the land? Wait a minute. If the Holy Ghost is a thing, how can I lie to him? He just told me, he said, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? And you kept part of it. See, the problem was he came and bought part of the money. He kept part to himself, so now he's deceiving. Does everybody see that? I want you to see this now. Because he, he bring it like, okay, I'm going to bring $1,000, I'm going to give it to the church, but I know I sold the property for $2,000. Because watch this. Know why he got in trouble? The reason that people bought it was because he know he, they know that he's going to give it to the church. So he kept back part of it. You tracking? All right, let's go. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? You see that? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Let's just, let's just stop right there. Stop going to God, praying, Lord, if you do this for me, I'll do that. Stop it. If you know that you don't have it within you or you don't have the wherewithal to do what you just made a commitment to God, do, don't make a commitment to God. Does everybody understand that? That's dangerous. I'm not going to say you're going to die but you're going to get yourself in trouble. Amen. I'm just going to be real. Does everybody understand that? Amen. If you say, God, if you give me this promotion, I'm a tithe. If you're not tithing now, how are you going to tithe with a promotion? I'm serious. Think about it now. You make $2,000 a week. I'm just using this as an example. What's a tie to $2,000? $200. But you struggle to let it go. How are you going to tie it all $4,000 a week? You're going to look at it like, all that go to the church? Am I making sense? Don't do it. The Bible said don't make a vow because he expects you to pay for it. He expects for you to pay that vow. I'm using it as an example because everybody understands money. Don't go to God and say, Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Does everybody understand that? All right, let's go deeper. I'm almost done. Y'all got to look on your face like, why, why are you so spooky tonight? Okay. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave her the ghost. He died. What part of the Bible we in? New Testament. New Testament. Okay. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. End of the story? No. Verse 7. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done came in. Lesson number two. 
never conspire with other people to do something against God. Don't do it. Don't conspire with anyone to do something against God. Let's go deeper. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed to tempt the spirit of God? Wait a minute. If he's just a power or a force, how can you tempt him? Because he's a person. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door. It shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. This is why we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. You okay, Sister Cole? Okay, I just want to make sure you're okay. This is why we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Believe it or not, that scripture that says you're not your own is true. Amen. God saved us out of eternal bondage. He saved us from being eternally separated from him. He allowed the Holy Spirit to come inside of us to stir us up to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Everybody tracking? We belong to the devil. Do you understand me? God came and snatched us. Whether you, now when you belong to the devil, who had control of themselves? Nobody should raise their hand because none of us had any control. Amen. We couldn't think straight. We couldn't do nothing right. Why? Because we was imprisoned. God came. He broke the chain and he saved us. Why is it that we get saved? Now we want to do whatever we want to do. I ain't going to church. Yeah, but when you went to the club, you was going to the devil's church. You was buying spirits. You had, the, you had the devil's praise and worship leader. That was the DJ. Yeah. The preacher was the bartender. Can you see it? And you was what? Giving him tithes and offering to the devil. I know some of y'all didn't do it. Well, I, I'm sorry. I did. Because I know y'all did. Y'all weren't there. We were taking our hard-earned money and giving the devil tithes and offerings. And so God, he saves us from that and now we want to be in charge. But we weren't in charge over here. But he saves us, cleans us up, pastor, give us a good job, mind right, driving good, looking good, dressing good. Now we want to, we want to be in charge. We don't want God to be in charge. We want God to be the co-pilot. God ain't co-piloting nobody. Am I helping anybody else? Now we get blessed. Now we don't want to come to church. We in charge. I'm going to do my own thing. But we ain't do our own thing over here. Somebody talk to me. We had no control when we was under the control of the devil. 
We was in relationships that was no good and we knew they weren't no good. We gave our heart and money to that joker or to that female who was not no good for us. Amen. And then God delivered us from bad relationships. He delivered us from a hateful boss. He delivered us from underpaying jobs. He brings us over here. He sets us on solid ground. Now we want to be in charge. My, 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 my. And God help you if, you, if somebody give you a title, give you a, 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 a license, or, or make you an elder. Now you're out here ripping people's churches up because you want your own. Who gave it to you, God? Over here, we couldn't keep a dime. We get over here, God give us a mind, amen, to learn how to get a checking account, a saving account, and we won't even bring God an offering on Sunday morning. I only got five minutes. We want to be in charge now. I want to do what I want to do. I'm in control of my own destiny. Job said, he giveth and he take it away. Some of y'all in a position, but he about to take it. Because there's, there's no, uh, let me tell you something. There's no excuse. I don't care about you hate on me. See, my job is to tell you the truth. You won't be able to stand before God and say, well, see, what had happened, God, uh, I went to that church. He, mm -mm, he told you. He made sure. He was ostracized. He was talked about. He was stabbed. They, they, but he stayed true. Because I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. See, I want multiple crowns. I want just one. So I'm going to tell you the truth. You can go ahead and hate. You hating on him. You ain't hating on me. Amen. See, I didn't bless you. God did. Amen. God got you out of debt. God allowed you to survive the bankruptcy. God saved you from that car accident that you shouldn't have. Amen. Survived. Amen. Then you get to the point where you, you own your own. You begin, as the old folks say, you begin to smell yourself. Now can't nobody tell you nothing. I got this. No, you think you got this. That's why we, when we grieve the Holy Spirit. And then we got the nerve to come on, we're going to go pray. God will not hear a, per, a prayer, per, person's prayer who's operating in rebellion. Let me put that out there. He won't hear it. I'm telling you right now. He will not hear your prayers if you're walking in rebellion. If you're walking, if you're violating the principles of God, you can have a, a prayer shrine. He's not hearing your prayers. I'm just trying to help us out. And the dangers of being a church in a church like this, you know what's dangerous about it? Now you know. We ain't up here tuning up. We telling you just like a THS has ease. So now you're accountable. You can't say, I didn't know. Y'all all right? Y'all still love Bishop? All right. This is why we got to steady the Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve him. We want to be in concert with him. That word concert, in step. We want to make sure that we are aligned with him so he can protect us. He can strengthen us. An advocate is someone who stands in your place. He's a strengthener. He's a comforter. Do you understand me? That's why I read it from the Amplified Version, because I want to see you, I want you to see all his attributes. He is the third person of the Godhead. I didn't get a chance to get into the word Trinity tonight. It is not a biblical term, it is a theological term. Does everybody understand that? People tell me, ain't no Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's three. All God, three different personalities. 
Does everybody understand me? The ministry of the Holy Spirit is vital if we're going to go to the next level and experience the deep things of God. That's when that glory comes in. That's when God can really begin to bless you and begin to show you some things. He'll begin to holy. You tap into the Holy Spirit. He'll begin to warn you of things that come. He'll give you dreams and visions about certain people. You better hear what I'm trying to tell you. He'll keep you out of trouble. Because he's God. One of his functions is to protect us. And I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Exploring the dynamics of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Amen.